Hi there, guys. This is Alex and Todd. G'day. Tank fans, what a great day we've got here today, Alex. Absolutely. It's a little bit overcast, but that keeps all the heat away. So, better that than it being hot and dusty like it was yesterday. Oh, that's right. And we had, uh, we had some bright sunshine this morning, and uh, as you can see, I'm pretty uh, red and beaten up by the sun. Yes, <laughs> I am a little bit burnt from yesterday, but at least uh, it's not raining on us, so we're not having any problems with the vehicles uh, on the track. I think uh, for everyone out here, um, I'm sure the cloud, they will welcome the cloud cover. Um, Absolutely. A bit of rain predicted tomorrow, but uh, at the moment it, it's great out there on the track. Fingers crossed. The camera will now be flicking over to have a look at all the vehicles we've got on the track today, and we've just got some incredible stuff out. So you can see Jason there in the Gepard. Gepard's been going all morning non-stop. Yeah, he's getting a well-earned drink. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that Gepard, well, uh, last year Jason was driving the Leopard 1, and he did... Uh, 90 trips over two days, so he did 45 trips a day. Oh, That's the T72 there. Cameron, driven by Cameron Stone, he'll be driving that all day. Yep, he uh, loves that thing. He absolutely loves it. He likes yeah. it more than his own tanks. And uh, by the time he climbs out of the vehicle at lunchtime, he'll be just covered he'll in be brown and brown. So you can also see there we've got the the Walker Bulldog back there. It's driven by a fellow called Mick. Uh, the Walker Bulldog is actually a Kiwi one. Came out of New Zealand, and uh, Mick and his te and the team that he works with. Down in Victoria, restored that. That's our OT810, so the Hitler's Revenge. So the Czech variant, or the Czech post-war variant of yeah. the, the 251. Driven today by uh, Tim Parry. I'm sure he's yeah, having Tim's a blast in there. In yeah. He's driving that very well. There it goes. Boy, I tell you what, it's loud up here in the commentary boxes. Oh, these yeah. vehicles whiz past us. So you can see a couple more of the vehicles there. We've got the Ram Kangaroos out for rides today. We've got the Humber. The Schwimmwagen there is just pulling in. That one's, that one's been a favourite. I was loading down there earlier, and the amount of people we sent around in that Schwimmwagen just crazy. Oh, there's the Gippard. Here it goes. You can, you can feel the vibration up here in the, uh, oh, the whole tower which rumbles. Box as that takes off. It rumbles. Holy smoke, what a, what a great vehicle. And smooth. All, all automatic transmission. Here comes the T-72. Yep. Crew of three. Had an auto loader. That's why they cut down on the crews, but that uh, auto, auto loader was uh, no match for a, a what was well the crewed, uh, Abrams? What was the height requirement for the drivers? They had to be under five foot something, wasn't it? Yeah. Otherwise, they couldn't get out the escape hatch, and they couldn't close the hatch down, so they couldn't lock down the vehicle. That's right. It's just the Soviets were hanging. Morning, Alex. Mm. OT80. Uh, we got a good lineup of German, the that's, old and the new. That's Manfred, and <laughs> that's Manfred, our uh, resident German driver, driving the Schwimmwagen there. And he, he was in the. We've got a nice figure of eight uh, track for the vehicles to run around, giving way to the right. So uh, the, the drivers have to be cautious as they approach that uh, intersection. Particularly cautious because some of those German vehicles, I'll tell you what, you can't, you, very difficult seeing out, out oh, of that. Like the Agpanzer IV. We have a rule on the track. Everything gives way to the Agpanzer IV, no matter what, because you cannot see out of it whatsoever. There's Jesse there. You would have seen him on our Workshop Wednesday videos and some happy, happy riders. I tell you what, uh, those uh, all those riders are, yeah, they're ecstatic. They're I'm, having I'm, a really good day. And was, the queue for ride tickets is I about... I was driving the Sherman oh. Firefly early this morning, and I tell you what, people had a big smile as they climbed on. They had an even bigger smile as they came off, Alex. <laughs> Holy smoke. <laughs> they get so <laughs> excited to get on, and then the, the vehicle just surpasses all their expectations by yards. So by the time they get off, they're just they're so full of excitement and energy. Yep. I yep. had a fellow come back three times in a row to go on different vehicles because he was so God. excited he just wanted to do them all right then and there yeah on your screen now you've got the bmp3 it wasn't working uh, a couple of years ago we we tried very the, hard the bmp1 bmp1 the yeah the iraqi with a colored one gun. yeah gun so that one's um the bmp1 ours is an east german made one but it's been marked up in the in the colors of um i think it's 15th republican guards for, yep. for iraq that was a cool one there. Something a bit different. Amphibious. I don't think they needed amphibious in uh, in Iraq. No, I don't think they do. <laughs> so what else have we got? We've got Hi J W W T Four. Greetings. Thank you very much. And good luck with your ideas for a museum. And uh, B Straben. Thank you very much for your kind words. We like our collection. It's 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 pretty fun. I tell you what, everyone. I've, uh, this is just an unbelievable collection, uh, and and what we're seeing here today sort of rivals Bovington Tank Museum in in England. Um, 
you know. You, but they don't get else? out the fun stuff. No, where else are you spin. going to uh, get to see and ride on, on these these vehicles? Well, thanks for letting us know the stream's going a little bit better. The tech guys will see that and they'll appreciate that. So, guys, we did mention yesterday we do have a lot of projects coming up in the future. You guys would have seen the teaser at the at the Weld at Grant. Um, we also have a few German projects coming up, which are always a favourite. But we do have a couple of non-German projects coming up. So, as I did mention yesterday, as we gave you guys a little sneak, we've got a Stalingrad veteran vehicle coming up for restoration. I think Glenn and Bo are going to be doing that one. Um, that's a wrecked vehicle. It's one of three in the world. <laughs> it's the only one outside of Russia. So that's, that's going to be a pretty exceptional one. Yes, and I've, I've seen uh, parts of it in the museum. Yeah. Uh, it's I reckon, obviously I reckon been we've used as a range, well, as a target a, practice. It was a range target in France for about 70 years in Brittany. Yep. In Brittany. I got it off a fellow in Brittany for the, for the owner. It's got some bloody impressive holes in it. Oh, yes. So it's, uh, it's been hit. If and you look uh, in the rear of the turret, there's still, I think there's 75s, German 75s that have been fired at it, and they're stuck in the turret. Yep. They're still there. You can feel the round. It's still present. Well, Bo, Bo and the team, oh, I'm going to really look forward to seeing that. Oh, and yeah. They're like magicians over there in that workshop. I don't know how they do it, but they bend, they press, they heat, they cajole, and somehow they get those uh, those wrecks and parts together. Yeah. And then uh, a lot of what you see in the museum has been rebuilt. Oh, most from, the, from a lot seven. of our German collection especially, yeah. yeah. But the, um, the, the secret project, the, the Soviet project coming up, I think we've got about... We've got about 75% of the vehicle on site, and I think we've got another 5 to 10% en route, and what we can't acquire, we'll fabricate. So that's going to be a pretty complete project compared to some of our other ones where we've had to make a little bit more than that. You know, that's about a about an 80% complete vehicle from a range target wreck. Yeah. That's pretty good. Well, let me tell you, the, uh, the, the project which I'm most excited about is the uh, getting the, uh, the Tiger One running. Oh, that's... Holy smoke. Uh, I'm not sure when we're going to do that. That's a, that's a big job. ASAP. Oh. But I tell you what, I've got to hand it to Kurt and the team. Uh, they put those uh, YouTube clips of the, the assembly of that tank. Uh, how they built it, how they pushed it together, where they got the parts from. Uh, what a, And it, the exhibit is complete mm. down there on the floor, and it's it an amazing incredible. job. Especially with those Absolutely. extra pieces we put around to show the thickness. Yep. Uh, B. Straben there, you talk about the, uh, the Littlefield Panther. That's actually a very interesting Panther. So you might know the Germans with their pioneering 251 SDKF sets, you know the ones I'm talking yep. about with the pontoons. Yeah. You sort of see on the sides, they had mounting brackets for those pontoons. Towards the end of the war, the Germans experimented with those mounting brackets on Panthers. Did you know right. that? No. They put the mounting brackets on the sides of the hull and they actually mounted pontoon bridge supports to the sides of the Panthers. When Littlefield's Panther was going under restoration, they found these brackets and they could not figure out what they were. They yep. spent years trying to figure out what they were and they eventually thought, we can't figure it out, we'll cut them off. Yeah. They've still got them somewhere in storage, but that's what they are. And they only realised that about three years after they'd done the restoration, it was too late. <laughs> There's a really interesting little thing because that's the only panther that's ever been found with those mounts on it. Wow. The only other reference to them have been in blueprints. I don't think there's even photos of it. So that's a really interesting one, that panther. Well, I tell you what, we just saw a uh, we just saw a flash of the uh, the people lined up to, for rides. I yeah. wonder if we can get a camera inside the museum and, and just see the people lined up oh, at the, the, exactly. the maybe, ticket counter. Maybe guys, if you could take the camera into the ticket counter and just show us the amount of people here today queuing up, it's just incredible. Caitlin is the most popular girl she in is. Cairns. Absolutely, there's hundred people lining she, up. She's to got a, she's speak got about a thousand her. people after her attention right now, and they are all giving her money. <laughs> and they're all giving her money. <laughs> No, it's just, it's so great to see so many people here, especially after so many years with COVID and travel restrictions, just being open this year and just having so many people here. It's oh, just look, so great. I, I've come up this year uh, with a team from Sydney from the, um, the Australian Armoured uh, Vehicle Association. We, we try and come up here every year to, to lend a hand. And boy, uh, we haven't been able to for the last two years. We've been absolutely busting, but um, boy... It is so good to be up here and to uh, experience what we're oh, um, looks what like you're seeing now. They've broken down the panel. <laughs> oh yes, we're going to get breakdowns. These vehicles, um, you know, particularly oh, the Second they're World gonna, War. They're going to push it. They'll push it off. I just saw Second that. Second World War vehicles. Then. They're 80 years old now. Uh, and uh, there's the Gepard. It's a credit to the two mechanics they've got here. Abs oh, three mechanics. Three mechanics. Three mechanics. Three now. mechanics. So Captain Nemo, um, thank you very much for your comments about the um, well. about 
uh, sorry about the Littlefield collection. I believe it was you that said um, it's a shame it got broken up. We actually uh, got a lot Alex, of vehicles Alex, have a look here. at the, just, just to oh, wow. cut yeah, in now, can, we're getting a sign see the from inside of, and we're seeing the back yeah. of the... Uh, uh, whoever's Caitlin. on the camera inside, I don't know if we're allowed to show off the, the top secret Soviet project, but if you want to, and we're allowed to, feel free to bring it up on the on the video and we'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, well, and that, uh, that'll that help uh, everyone out there online. Yeah, they can, they can uh, figure out what it is. Guess and uh, yeah, have a, have a look, it's a range target. Exactly. <laughs> But no, I think it was Captain Nemo that was talking about the Littlefield Collection getting broken up and that being very sad. We've actually got a lot of exhibits here from the Littlefield Collection. So we've got Tiny Teddy from Littlefield, an M113 yep. FSV, which is an Aussie Vietnam vet. An We're Australian cruiser? Yep. Oh, the was that the No, no, we didn't get the cruiser. Right. The cruiser came from Texas. The AC1 right. came from Texas. Okay. That was kindly given to us by World of Wargaming. Yep. Um, we got from Littlefield the Pion, the Pion, the 2S7. Yep. We got the 2S1 from Littlefield Collection as well. Um, we got the M114 yep. from the Littlefield collection. We got a good mix of vehicles from there. The Ram came from the Littlefield collection as well. And you also got the uh, MRV, Medium Reconnaissance Vehicle, which is the M113 with a Scorpion turret on it. I don't know if that came from Littlefield. That, I think that was a disposals one. No, I'm pretty sure. Was that Littlefield I'm pretty one? sure that, that came back to Australia. Um, yeah. From the Lilyfield collection, that so uh, that would be good to see that running around, but uh, not yeah. not today. I, I tell you what, some of the the little vehicles haven't been touched. Everyone's yeah. going, Everyone everyone's the going for the big. Uh, so the big guys on the stream, tanks. this is the top secret project. So it's a KV1S Klemin Borisilov Skorotsnoy. So this vehicle was served at Stalingrad. It got knocked out by the Germans. You can see extensive damage. Um, it's an incredible vehicle, one of only three in the world. We're going to bring this thing back to life. So this is going to be a really incredible project. So it served in Stalingrad, was knocked out by the Germans. Somehow it ended up back in Germany towards the end of the war. The French have found it, taken it to France. And when they realised it wasn't a German vehicle, they went, oh, we don't want this, let's yep. shoot at it. So you can see there's extensive damage to the vehicle. Um, but we have a large amount of parts for the vehicle. We're pretty confident in our abilities and we know that we can bring this thing back to a restored state. It's going to be absolutely Well, incredible. I'm going to have fun watching this online as, uh, as Kurt does his business and... Um Brings this tank back to life. Oh yeah, it's going to be a and, big uh, video series. Yeah, this one. I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy it, <laughs> Kurt. If you're there, you're, you're going to probably have to do the, you know, about ten series as you bring this one back to life. It's going to have a lot of interest. Oh yeah, but you know this, this vehicle isn't, you know, replaceable. I mean, if you look at the front plate there in the bottom left of the, of the, of the shot there, you can see rounds have just punched through it, and yep. that sort of massive impact point on the bottom right of the turret. If the camera gets right up close to that, you can see the shot still inside the vehicle from the Second World War, where it penetrated the vehicle and didn't go all yeah. the way through. So, it's just, it's a one-of-a-kind piece, this one. You know, yeah. Stalingrad. One, yeah. of the, one of the two most iconic battles of the Eastern Front, Stalingrad and Kursk, and it was there. You know? Yeah. It's just an absolutely incredible vehicle. It's just such a shame we don't have the, the full story of it. But it's, it's going to be an absolutely incredible centerpiece to the, one of the centerpiece exhibits to the museum, I have no doubt. Well, I wonder if we're going to get that running one day. Maybe, but Maybe. that's a big project by itself. Well, that's a hell, hell of a project. Well, back on the track, I mean, uh, what's really good, we haven't had the water truck going around today. No, so it'll, we, it'll appear. Yes, well, we had uh, all day yesterday because the ground had been so dry. Um, we had to stop uh, stop the vehicles running the circuit uh, to damp mm. down the track. I think we got a bit of rain uh, overnight here in Cairns. Yeah, and, uh, I, we did get a little bit, but it's good. It's kept it damp. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm enjoying the cool breeze, I can tell you. Some years yes. <laughs> we've absolutely baked. So, JWWT4. Um, it probably won't be in winter camo. Um, we don't really do much winter camo here just because the dust does accumulate on vehicles over time. And if it's a white vehicle when you get dust on it it shows the dust a lot more um, also when we take them out on the track they get dirtier a lot easier they need a lot more cleaning to look nice and presentable um, and they are working vehicles a lot of the time so we're not sure what it'll be but it will look very good I have no doubt people waiting very patiently down there in the queue well for most people look at that line holy smoke <laughs> <laughs> it's stretching out Back I think we're going to have a very busy day today. <laughs> as soon as this stream ends, guys, we've got to go back down. Um, Todd's going to be driving the Firefly. I'm going to be boarding people on the vehicles, and we're going to be we're going to be flat. We're going to be uh, flat stick this yeah. afternoon. I can tell you. <laughs> so, guys, if you have any more questions, we're watching the chat. Feel free to ask. 
we're happy to ask anything, answer anything we can at this point in time. So if you want to ask about future projects, things we're doing, just let us know. You know, I think everyone, most people here probably know what they are, but one of the most common questions I get in the museum is, what are those things on all the turrets of the modern tanks, those little tube things? Oh yes, the smoke discharging. The smoke discharges. <laughs> uh, I, I swear, that's, uh, there's three questions you get. It's, what's the difference between a tank and a tank destroyer? What are those tube things on all the vehicles? We say beer dispensers. Yes. <laughs> and uh, how well, often do you run your vehicles? Let me tell you, these days in the army, you know, They're you go dispenser. out on exercise. Yeah, take the cap off, put the <laughs> yeah, beers in, right. put the cap back on. So exactly. that's, our, that's our modelling competition, guys. So we judged the winners last night, the, the winners on Facebook. But if the camera can go around to the right, they will zoom in on the winner. And that was the M113. I loved that. Oh, that Did you have wasn't a good that look? good. Absolutely. I absolutely loved it. There's just so much character there. You've even got the little dog hanging out on the back of the on the back of the vehicle. I just I looked at it and I loved it. I've got to find out who painted yep. it, and I'm going to ask them if I can well, buy it because I love it so much. I look, I tell you what, the the M5 Stewart. If we can go around and have a look yeah, at that, that one I was love, very yeah. good too. I really like that one. It as was well. between this one and the M5 Stewart, um, which I thought were absolutely cracking models. Here we are. Look at look at the detail there. Look at the crew. Yeah. Absolutely magnificent. Do you know what a terrapin is? I've got a fellow here asking uh, an 8x8 amphibious terrapin. We might quickly Google up what that is, but I, unfortunately, the Captain Nemo, don't know uh, what that is. Terrapin yep. 8x8. No, I've got no idea who bought the terrapin. Does this look familiar to you at all, Todd? S say again. Oh, right. Okay. You seen one of those? Yeah, before? no, I haven't. No. no, I'm afraid we don't know. We know a lot of things going on around around Australia between us, but um, I'm afraid I don't know anything about no. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been in the military for 40 years, and I I haven't seen. No, one. neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Julio Wobbets, um, it's actually T55 model, not a T54 model, and I think uh, we we don't have one out on the track actually. That's a T72. Then the Cameron Stones in the T72, though. Ah, yeah, we've got some people loading up into the uh, the Mark IV again. That's going to be shortly coming out onto the track. We Very had so popular. many people after Panzer IV rides this morning that we had to bring out a second Panzer IV. Yeah. Because we had the go. J out, but we've had to bring the G out too just because we couldn't keep up. The Qs well, were growing too fast. I think secretly everyone would would be liking to ride in one of these, but oh, I think uh, these are sort of premium rides. Yeah, well, Leopold, um, one day we'll get the Sentinel running. It's just the problem is, is it's a cloverleaf. So we've got three engines we need to rebuild, three engines we need to sort out. All the electricals are shot. So all the electricals need to be completely replaced. Um, most of the interior is there, but all the instruments are damaged and they're not set up properly. So we need to redo all the instruments, do all the electricals, and overhaul all the engines and make sure the drive's running correctly. So it's a it's a it's a 12-month job for our mechanical team, um, and it's just not something we've been able to do up to now. We will get to it one day, hopefully, because yep. I'd love to see the Sentinel out on the track, but we're just not sure when we're going to get around to it. So there goes the Panzer IV with the with the Zimmerit, uh, not the Zimmerit, the uh, Thomas Shield. So, Victor Reznov, uh, we are doing rides in the Firefly, but I think she's um, got a bit warm, so they're probably doing a little cool down. So, with the whole yeah, of the vehicles... Uh, the, the, the Firefly was running very hot this morning. Yeah. We, we topped it up uh, after you know, yesterday, and uh, we've topped it up again this morning, and you can see the turrets around to the left now while yeah, they're so uh, getting access. Because we did five rides in it before we came up here. Yeah. And normally, after that many rides, they sort of need about half an hour to an hour to cool down, and and take stock and refill the radiator you and you can see that big box out the back of the turret that's that's to uh, allow for the recoil of the 17 pounder gun yeah that to cut the back of the turret open and stick the radio set yep. out the back because that's no so, and yeah it's it's incredible to to get up there and have a look at the 17 pounder mm. it's on it's the only way they could oh, fit it inside yeah. they had to put it in sideways it's very funny though because the british always like to act very proud of their firefly because they go yes we stuck a 17 pounder in a tank and then the Australians turn, we should all be turning around and going, yeah, but you were the second people to do it. <laughs> because we were the first ones to stick a 17-pounder in a tank. Right. And we didn't have to turn it sideways. The AC-3s. And the very yes. interesting, uh, AC-4s. AC-4s. And the very interesting thing is the fellow who was on the design team for Sentinel that made the 17-pounder configuration for the Sentinel 
was then spirited away to the UK and was on the Sherman Firefly design team. Right. <laughs> Holy smoke. So I mean, uh, I mean the Germans. I mean, they, these could uh, these could match the um, the Panther tanks. Yep. Which probably the, the Panther had the most formidable gun of any tank. Uh, uh, probably not the the Tiger too, but certainly um, the 75 mil high velocity gun on the Panther. So there was, you can uh, see guys out on the kitten crowd. That's Rob. Yep. He's having a great time. Yeah, Rob's Rob's the the owner of our collection here and the director of our museum. He's an incredible fellow. He's just his passion for history. I, I don't think I've ever met anyone that's more passionate. He's Have you, Todd? I no, that's right. He's the uh, he's the key puppet master out here today. Oh, his directing. drive and his <laughs> passion to make all of this happen. Yep. The amount of work hours, the amount of money, the amount of time, the amount of thought that he's put in. You see, they're cooling ah, everything look, down. Ah, look, there, there. Okay, I'm, I'm well familiar with it. That cap, <laughs> that is the water cap for the on the Firefly. And uh, <laughs> I tell you what, it's uh, it's a hard bugger to to get to. You have to rotate the turret, yeah. lift up that grill, and uh, it's got a special locking lever on it. Uh, but it, uh, it jumped off this morning after we'd filled it up, and we drained most of the water. So we've got a couple more questions here. So Todd, you want to answer this one? Doom Shadow Storm Mask are the biggest tankies we have in the museum. Would that be the, the Centurion? Oh, look, it's got to be the Centurion or the Chieftain. Yeah. All right. But uh, you got an M48 tank in there as well. Holy smoke, they're, they're big tanks. Yeah. I think biggest vehicle would probably be the 2S7. Yes. Because it's so long and the gun is so large, yep. it nearly hits the roof. Yeah. And then we've got a question there from Dan. Will the welded grant be restored to running? Yes, it will be. Um, it's... Uh, M3A5, I think. I'm not a grant expert, but that's the welder grant with the twin diesel power pack at the back, yep. not the radials. So it's got twin diesels and it will be a running vehicle, which is really going to be awesome. So we'll have a running grant with twin diesels and a running grant with a radial. Yep. Well, those nine cylinder radial uh, aircraft engines, basically, boy, yeah. they're, they're, they're loud. What was the design choice for that? Was it because they didn't have enough diesel engines? Or did they think they were a genuinely good no, choice? No, no. They, um, well, they, I reckon if they'd started with diesel engines, they would have kept would have diesel kept engines them. because they're a lot safer to run. Yeah. And, and uh, they don't explode as, as <laughs> easily. But uh, they made a decision during the war that they'd have one standard, pet, uh, one fuel, and that was going to be petrol, and uh, to their detriment. Yeah. Um, because you do see them making diesels, but they didn't use them themselves. They were all export yeah. vehicles, like the M2A2s. They sent thousands of those to Russia because That's the Russians right. wouldn't accept, they didn't want to accept petrols. They did take petrols because they took a whole bunch of Lees. Yes. Um, and they took Valentines. Valentines are petrols. Valentines, yes. But and then they sent diesels to the Russians and they sent diesel Lees to the British as well for North Africa. They had the M3A1 Stewarts uh, yep. powered by Giverson uh, di uh, diesel engines. Diesels, engine. yep. Um, again, they, they were ex exported. So Victor's asked about the service history for the Firefly. So the Firefly is ex-Italian army, but it's a World War II production model. The problem is the British didn't keep very good track of where things went. So we can't figure out where it was, but we know it ended up in Italy, either at the during the war or after the war, and then was then transferred to the Italian army. So we're still doing a bit of research on that. But the markings and colours on the vehicle are the Sherbrooke Fusiliers, 23rd, I think, Canadian. And they're the unit that's responsible, or uh, credited with killing Whitman, Tiger right. Ace Whitman, yep. in Normandy. So they smashed holes in a brick wall, parked the Sherman Fireflies and aimed them out the holes. So when Whitman drove past through a field, they shot him from the side and they shot his whole convoy. And obliterated yeah, it. I tell you what, the German crews certainly knew when they saw a troop of Canadian or British uh, Shermans, they knew there was a Firefly. Even South one. African ones yep. in Italy as well. And those German crews knew they had to take out the Firefly yep. first. because That's it, why you've it, got it that interesting them, 2, meters. camouflage on the gun barrels with the squiggles. Yep. The other, the other Shermans, uh, equipped with uh, 75 mil guns, really they had to close to within... 600 meters to uh, to even think of maybe penetrating some of the armor, yeah. the side armor or the rear armor on a panther or a tiger. Leopold the Digger asked about book on Sentinels. So we've actually just published a book here at the museum. So 
you can see there the Geppard going around the track with Jason, the assistant manager. Jason has actually just published a book on the Australian Cruiser program. Um, the museum is the sole stockist for the book. So if you are interested in purchasing a copy, it's available through our website. Um, or after Armour Fest, give us a call and we can sort you out one over the phone. And if you're here today, you can get your book signed. Exactly. You can get it signed by the driver and he'll give you a, a dirty, dusty, oily handprint on the inside <laughs> cover too, if you'd like. Um, what else have we got? Uh, so Doom Shadow Storm asks, most modern tank, T-72. It's probably the Gepard, isn't it? Yeah. Because they retired the Gepards uh, in the yeah. 90s. Yep. So, but T-72s, they're still seeing service as well. But yep. I think if you're talking about the most recently built vehicle, it would probably be the Gepard, wouldn't it? Yeah, and uh, we've got uh, an Australian Army Leopard in the museum. Well, they built these after. Yes. These were later. Yep. These only, I think they only actually retired them in the early 2000s, actually, now that I think about it. They, they only were retired quite recently. They're actually just sent, uh, the Germans are trying to send these to Ukraine, but it's a bit of a comedy of errors, isn't it? What happened oh, first? Oh, the ammunition, holy smoke. The, tell what tell us about that, Alex. Oh, <laughs> the, the, so the Germans want to send them to Ukraine, but the ammunition is manufactured by a Swiss company. The Swiss company won't allow the ammunition to go into Ukraine because it avoids their neutrality. So then they've gone off and they've gone to Brazil. And Brazil goes, we'll make you the ammo. But the Germans have got a supply of this ammo and it's faulty and doesn't work properly. So then they've gone to the Norwegians and the Norwegians have said, yes, we can make you the ammo. And they've got the ammo, they've fitted it to the vehicle, but the onboard computer systems won't allow the guns to fire the ammunition because it's uh. not the correct ammunition. It's just, it's the a comedy, comedy of errors. errors. Absolutely. They've spent more money trying to get the ammunition sorted than the vehicles are worth. Yeah. It's well, we had the same in uh, Vietnam when the Australians were there. They took their Carl Gustav anti-armour weapons with them for mm. bunker busting and uh, we were not allowed to, uh, oh, we couldn't get ammunition because yeah, the Swedes the refused the Swedes to supply it. Well, the Swedes supported North Vietnam. They thought that no one should be in there and they thought we should leave well enough alone. I do love the Walker Bulldog. It's such a lovely vehicle. The story is with those, is America went to New Zealand and said, hey guys, you wanna come have some more fun in Vietnam? Here's 10 Walker Bulldogs. Here you go, free gift. You get training crews, you get equipment, you get spares, bring them to Vietnam. We'll have a good time. And New Zealand said, thank you for the tanks. We're not coming. <laughs> so they kept the 10 tanks. Uh, they sold all of their Centurions to Australia for parts. Um, and they kept them. I think most of them still exist. Um, I know I saw one recently in New Zealand, but I think there's about six out of ten left. They're, they're um, ours remarkable. has the call sign Anarchy. They're all named with a name starting with A. Um, ours is actually a collection of two vehicles. So the lower hull was a recovery vehicle and the turret was from a wrecked one. Right. Fascinating stuff. So Skeleton Stormtrooper, we do have a T-55. She'll be out tomorrow. Kestrel, um, I'm not sure exactly how many vehicles because we keep getting new things. The Schwim Wagon arrived last week, but um, I think last count we have over 250 floor exhibits, but that includes the tanks, the utility vehicles, the soft skins, which we don't have many of, armoured personnel carriers, anti-tank guns, howitzers, uh, even a bar mine thrower. Um, we have a lot of exhibits in the museum, so... Oh... T-72 is pretty cool there. We've got the Hummer. Hummer out on the track at the moment. British reconnaissance vehicle of the Second World War. Armed with a 37mm gun. Saw extensive uh, use in the desert. You can see sort of where the inspiration, when, when you see the Hummer, you'll see. But you can see there on the on the stream, you can see the Fox. So there you go, guys. There's, there's Bo and there's his brother Ryan. So now there's two of them. There's yeah. two of them, ladies. Chase them both. <laughs> then we've got Tim there up there on the Panzer uh, 4G. Mal French there, supervising. <laughs> Tim Parry. So they're figuring out how we can keep all these vehicles cool and keep them running all day. Oh, personal favourite tanks. What's yours? Yeah, but can oh. I, only, I only pick one. Look, today it's got to be the uh, the Sherman Firefly. Yeah. Uh, holy smoke. Yeah, yeah, a bit biased. Like, <laughs> well, like, like I'm <laughs> biased. I've driven it twice today. <laughs> Although I know it's, 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 it looks like they've, uh, they've run into problems. Yes. Um, with uh, with a heating system again. But no, it was... Well, yeah. Hang on, we've got a shot here now of the uh, of the Panther. 
You can't really go past the Panther, can you? No, you can't. That's I mean, pretty unique, pretty special. That is a special vehicle. And veteran of the 12th SS in Normandy. Yeah. Um, one of a kind. I noticed uh, pe Rob was letting people climb on it yesterday, but they had to go on no, in their socks. It's, it's a no-shoes vehicle. <laughs> no-shoes vehicle. So, Shades, we haven't taken the swim for a swim yet. Um, we're not quite sure because we think one of the last owners, they've ended up with holes in the hull of the vehicle, and instead of fixing them, they've just filled them with a filling agent. So we think that as soon as the vehicle goes in the water and goes under pressure, um, it might start to leak. Right. So until we can actually clear off all the old paint, which isn't the original, clear off all this newly applied paint, and find where all these cracks and holes are, we don't trust it enough to take it into water. So the mechanist asked why that Sherman was without a turret. It's not a Sherman, it's a kangaroo. Yes. So that's a kangaroo ram. So the Canadians built ram tanks um, and they kangarooed them. And that process is removing the turret or the armament and converting it into an armoured personnel carrier, which they did a lot Look towards like the end of the war because they started to run out of men. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, it's... Um I would hate to be trying to dismount from that ram. There's, there's no way to get in or no way to get out. It's you, horrifying. It's a long drop, and yeah. if, you're, uh, if you've got all your combat yeah. equipment you're on and you're carrying your a bread gun, rifle. it's a long drop. And if you're getting out under fire, there is no door. You've got to go out over across the yeah. turret You just ring, jump over the top, and there's no slide down seats the side or anything inside or handholds. You're just in an empty box. Yeah. You just get thrown around and bashed into everything. And I tell you what, um, you know, the way the Germans uh, used airburst ammunition against infantry and, uh, and armour and artillery units, mm. there was no protection in the ram. I mean, the driver has a little bit of uh, steel over the top of his head, but the poor bloody infantry in the back are totally exposed to airburst munitions. Yeah, so sorry, guys. It, it, the, um, the Humber does have a 40 millimeter in a two-pounder, not a, not a 37. Sorry for that. What? No, doesn't matter. Here we go, getting some good shots of the uh, the Mark IV. That's Kurt up there in the <laughs> so in Galaxy the turret. Our kangaroo is uh, it was a nineteen forty three made vehicle hull. Um, came from the Littlefield collection. Yeah, There's g'day Curtis, Kurt. Curtis from Ozama. Make sure to type in the chat. Hello, Curtis from Ozama. He loves it. Yep. So make sure you type that into the chat. Send that through. He's giving us tank tank cam. Tank cam. Tank cam today. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. He's enjoying himself he's as well. He's having a good day. <laughs> he's probably sick of walking around. First class ride now, Kurt. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, Kangaroo was made 1942. It ended up on a British Army range after the war, as a lot of the Rams did, because not many of them actually went home. A lot of them just sort of hung around Europe. And uh, got restored, and it ended up in Jacques Littlefield's collection. That's where we acquired it from. The horse B, yeah, yeah, we do have a Centurion in the collection, but um, it's not running at the moment, so we've got that inside. Good, coming up on the intersection. Remember, they've got to give way to the right. Uh, and they're, they're across. So Galaxy River, that, that tank would definitely be the Panther. So the Panther is the most expensive. Um, a lot of figures have been thrown around with the, with the different values and costs and everything else. Uh, I can tell you that 99% of them are fake. I've heard $35 million thrown around quite a bit, and that's not correct. Um, and I've heard a lot of people saying that Rob bought it for nothing and... Uh, and I also know that's not correct. I know a lot of money was spent on the vehicle. Uh, we don't ask Rob how much he pays for things. Um, it's not very polite of us to do. But do do be do a know, do be aware. It costs more than the okay. Hetzer, which is publicly known to be 3.5 million. It was more than the Hetzer. It was less than 35 million. So somewhere in the middle there, and we can't really tell you what it was. Well, as a tank owner myself, I can tell you the cheapest thing about tanks is the original purchase price because then <laughs> everything after that is like owning a boat yep. costs everything's money 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 you throw money at it that's every right. day keeping those things uh or restoring them and then keeping them running uh moving them they're just uh, they're money pits they really are but boy. so kestrel is asked about idf vehicles so we we have one idf capture piece inside the museum um it's a what is it a BDR-152, what's the designation for those? 
the B BTR50? No. Uh, let me find out what it is. But it's a um, it's a Soviet armoured personnel carrier, and the Israelis have captured it off the Egyptians, and then they've reused it. So that came out of the Littlefield collection too. So yeah, it's a BDR-152. So Doom Shadow Storm asks about 327 on the Panther A. So that is its designation number. So you've got, how does it go? It goes battalion, it goes battalion platoon squadron, doesn't it? It goes down. Say so again? So your allocation numbers for the Panther. So you've got 3, 2, then 7. So yep. it's the seventh vehicle, isn't it? In the second squadron, in the third. Yeah, look, yeah. I, I can't. German I'm numbers, are the, that's Jason's specialty. Yeah. <laughs> German uh, markings, Jason does all of them. He does the numbers, the markings, everything. That's his, that's his go-to. Yeah, probably uh, squadron, troop, and vehicle number. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Mechanus asks how many vehicles. We were talking about them before, but I think there's about 12 to 15 that came out of the Littlefield collection. Somewhere around there. A good chunk. Which is funny, because Rob, uh, Rob only went over there to buy Tiny Teddy, the 113 FSV, and he came back with 14 or so. so <laughs> As you do when you go to an auction. He went shopping. <laughs> he went shopping. People, people complain when they go on a shopping street and they, and they spend a couple of thousand dollars yeah. on clothes. Imagine going over to... America and spending, you know, several million dollars on armoured vehicles. Uh, holy smoke. The shipping cost is a bit more than you would get for the clothing. Yep. Nemo, um, I'm pretty sure with the SPGs, we got the M110. The M110 is a Littlefield M110, I'm pretty yep. sure. Um, and I know we've got... What were the ones they used in Vietnam with the closed-in superstructure based on the Walker Bulldog chassis? It's got a 155 in it. Oh, the Sheridans, yes. No, no, not the Sheridans. The um, self-propelled guns. Ah. Let me, let me quickly have a look. Good, good shot there of uh, Manfred in the, in the swim wagon. Again, proving very popular today. Conferring with Lottie. Ah, uh, yep. See, look at that happy smile on that punter. <laughs> Absolutely. He's got to squeeze in amongst the big tanks. And out the back there, you see the water tanker. Yeah, it's going around for the first time today, dampening down the track. No, I don't think it's the M44. I'll have to figure it out and I'll ask me again tomorrow. I'll walk past and I'll check which one it is. There's so many tanks here. You know it's bad when you don't remember what tanks you have in the museum. When you don't remember the exact names of everything. You know that there's a lot here. <laughs> well, Alex, la last time or two years ago, I think that he had 100 and uh, Rob had 156 armoured vehicles. Yeah in the museum and we're going up and when i arrived uh on friday i mean there must have there must have been about 50 or 60 new vehicles all yeah you know, a hell of a lot of german vehicles have come in and oh yeah um, we got we had russian i think between now and next armor fest we're scheduled to receive 15 more vehicles wow scheduled rob always though manages to find extras and buys them and then surprises us with oh We've got a dingo arriving tomorrow. <laughs> well, and you've got two uh, under restoration in the, at least two under restoration in the workshops yeah. now. Well, Grant. hopefully the stook shouldn't be too much yeah, the longer. Stook. I mean, they're having troubles with some of those components. They're just so badly damaged. Lottie is very awesome. She's a pretty special driver. We'll see if the camera crew can find her out on the track. 
Well, we, we had a close up of her a, a few minutes ago we were talking to Manfred, the swim wagon. And she's down there somewhere. There she is. Over near the firefly. There she is. Those oh, Soviet MBTs just look so great, don't they? Now, it's very interesting. You have a lot of people, when they come to the museum, they go, why are the Soviet MBTs so light, so small, compared to, you know, chieftains and centurions and patterns and those kind of vehicles? They look at the Russian ones, they go, why are they so small, so light? And you have to understand that a lot of the time with these armoured vehicles, they are built to fight in places where they're built. You know, you've, you've got a tank here with the Russians that is designed to fight in Eastern Europe where infrastructure yeah. isn't that good. Where bridges can't take a 60 ton, you know, fully fully kitted up chieftain. How much is this chieftain? Yep. You're almost 60 tons. Oh, ton, about six, 60, 65 tons. You know, you've got dodgy, dodgy Eastern European bridges that would not take that weight, but they would yeah. take the weight of a T 72. Well, it, all, all the tanks are designed around their main armament. Yeah. And, um, you know, the heavier make a tank, the bigger the engine is. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. And your, Russian, uh, and your Russian tanks are so much lower to the ground. They're, they're very low profile, yes. harder to see. Yeah. Huge 120mm uh, smoothbore gun. Yeah. So for all, their, for all their flaws, they do have some very interesting design points here. Mm. And I think you, you must give the Soviet engineers and designers some credit because they did come up with some very good ideas for their vehicles and their vehicle design. Well, yeah, putting an automatic loader in mm. meant that you could reduce the number of crew. So yeah. T T seventy two. Well, has next a crew year, of three. For, speaking of automatic loaders, next year for Armorfest, guys, another vehicle that we've got coming soon is an AMX thirteen. So, so here you go, guys. Here's the chieftain. He's having a morning coffee and a break with his cameraman. <laughs> I think he's having fun on holidays. Lovely weather. We can almost see whether he's and having awesome a latte or a tanks, cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he's on, he is on camera and yeah. he's talking to he us. He doesn't know we can't hear him. <laughs> no, we can't hear anything. <laughs> so, Von Raystein, Ravenstein, we would love to get a Carlo Valencia CV. There's a couple floating around the world, a couple people we're talking to, but we really would love something Italian. A Carlo Valencia, an M1340, an M1139. Um, we'd love a Simavente 7518 or a 47. We'd, we'd just like something Italian, you know, to round out the collection. We've got Japanese, we've got everything. But we really would just like just something to represent. I think that's the whole point, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it is. Something representative. Yep. So, you look, I, I, they can't be that difficult to find. I'm sure Rob will, uh, will track uh, down. We've been trying for eight years. Yep. They're tricky. But so the mechanism, it's an AMX-13 with a 90mm gun, um, but it also has the S-11s. So the, the French, get this, they stuck a wire rack below the 90mm gun, or the 75mm gun, and then they stuck S-11 wire-guided missiles on it. And it just looks comical, it looks like something out of a Bugs Bunny film. <laughs> it's just hilarious. Yeah. So Leopold, we don't have the universals out today. Um, we don't really take them out of Fest because they're a bit clunky to use and they're just not really as popular as some of the other vehicles for the amount of work we have to put in them to get them running. So we do have a chaffy, but it doesn't run, it's just inside. Oh, we're getting, oh it looks like we're getting, uh, Kurt's getting uh, ready to get some good pictures of the, um, good of the pictures Panther. Of the Panther. Here we go. We're looking at their tracks now. We made fresh made tracks for the Panther because the old ones we had were so far gone. It had been sitting in storage for so long. You just see the size of it. <laughs> it's a massive beast. It is a monster. You know, so those blokes are standing up next to it, and the yeah, the hull is yeah. <laughs> the top of the hull is still well over their heads. Horsby here is asking us about our Mac. Uh, it's actually an ex-army Mac from the serial numbers inside, I think. Oh, yeah, civilian contract. All new tracks, so it takes like a while that. to so sort of settle in. Start Max. So we, we, we sort of hit a button, just and give it a, a massive cloud of dust, smoke, dust, and keep it tight. dust in the air from everywhere. <laughs> it's worry. quite fun actually. Oh, well, I'll start it up later, and you'll see. It's uh, it gets a bit dusty. 
nice zimmerant pattern on the uh, on the panther tank. Yes, that is the twins. That was the twins out there from uh, Combat Dealers fame. So guys, we've only got about five minutes left of the stream, unfortunately. So if you've got any questions for Todd or myself, feel free to ask us. Todd's got a wealth of knowledge and experience on particularly Australian history. So if you've got any questions in regards to anything like that or any vehicle questions, feel free to ask. Uh, so with the Tiger, um, we're not sure what we want to put in. It'll be modern diesels. It won't be a Maybach if we do do it. Um, but we're not sure when we're going to get around it because to remove the Tiger from the museum, what well, they don't tell you on the Workshop Wednesday videos is when they put it into the museum, they broke just about every swing arm on the vehicle to bring it in because they hadn't installed the suspension system. So when they brought it down from the sheds, they broke all the swing arms and fractured them. So they had to then jack the vehicle up, put it on the lifter, and then pull it into the museum. So when we go to remove it, we'll have to make sure the swing arms are all good, probably replace a couple, and then remove it on the trolley again, which was a nightmare, take it over to the other workshops, and then pretty much pull the thing half apart to rebuild it. It's, it's, it'll be a two-year project to get that thing running. Well, uh, there's been a bit of debate um, around the traps about um, using um, different engines. You see, the question is, is though, if you can't get an original engine, and you can get a vehicle running, albeit not with original drive components, is that not better than having a static vehicle that you can't use? Well, look, also one of safety. I it mean, is one uh, of safety. The old original Maybach engines for the Germans, I mean, they're 80 years old now. And, and wouldn't you much rather have a more reliable modern engine so you can actually see the vehicle running? It might not sound the same, but there's, there's enough yeah. original Maybach engines you, running around in the German tanks here. Yeah, well, you, you say that in our Panzer 4D, um, with its original Maybach engines, is one of the most reliable vehicles in the museum. Wow. So it... It comes down to how the engine's been kept, though. You know, that Maybach yeah. was buried underground. It was actually were very well preserved, and no one really touched it for a very, very, very long time. So... Auto load is fatal in Ukraine. With the oh, we've got a big queue of vehicles waiting to go in and unload. So, Leopold, yes, we do we've have a Fox, the coming. Humber. Uh, BMP one out. and the scimitar. Fox. Down Is that here. A scimitar. Scimitar. Saber. 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 Saber there. But no, we've um, we've got a Cromwell coming from the UK. It's been in the works for about four years. I think it's a Mark Five. Uh, we do have one coming. Um, what else we got? Yeah. See the. The, how many German tanks are in the museum? Is it the majority? It's probably around a third of the armoured vehicles in the museum are German. Well, the mechanist, uh, if lots of people ask for a, for a virtual tour of the museum, it um, might be this armour fest, but if you guys want a virtual tour um, with myself or with Curtis, just smash that in the comments. If you guys ask for it, we can do it. But we just need to know what you guys want from us and we'll try our best to give it to you via social media. Do you have anything you want to say, Todd, before we start to get ready uh, to wrap up? Oh, well, it's been... Uh, I mean, this is... Uh, if, you're, if you're here, um, you're having a great time. I suppose if, uh, if, if you're online, you're seeing, um, seeing what the museum Means has to offer. you're going to come offer. next year. Oh, look. you got no excuses, guys. No there's no excuses. COVID, no borders. Well, there's COVID, yep. but no border closures and rapid That's test kits everywhere. You can do it. Well, I think it's generally the last weekend in uh, in August. It's so always uh, last it, weekend of August. It's you know, put it on your bucket list and get up here. Exactly. And Cairns is a great place to visit anyway. Oh, especially this time of year. Yeah, get get away from those um, southern states uh, where it's bloody freezing. People are still skiing <laughs> down in the snowy mountains. Exactly. But uh, come up here, nice and warm. Contrary to belief, these Europeans and Americans don't think it snows in, in Australia. We've got a bit of everything <laughs> in Australia, I can tell you. Well, what we're looking at over the hills here, we're looking at primary jungle. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tropical jungle. And, of course, we've got the Barrier Reef just off the coast. So yeah. there's, a, there's a lot to see and do for the family if the family's not into um, tanks. Exactly. So you, can, you, you can be dropped off at tank daycare during the day. I've, 
I, I had uh, Judy riding with me this morning uh, in the Firefly. She's turning 70 oh. tomorrow, and that was her, uh, her birthday present. I saw her. She had a lovely time. <laughs> well, guys, yep. uh, that's it that's for the Saturday stream. And it's been great talking wait. to you. Oh. Thanks for all your questions. We're having a great time, you can tell. Oh, uh, yeah. Up in the, well, we, we've got the best, the best view here. So have a lovely day, guys. Thank you very much for tuning into the screen. If you, if you want that virtual tour or you want to give us any advice, just smash that in the comments, and we'll see you tomorrow. Same time. Same time.